Welcome to the fourth uh, tutorial key points for W201. We spent a lot of time uh, reviewing TMA02 um, and I made some uh, important general points that apply to all TMAs. The first was the importance of a logical structure that is designed to answer the question. Um, one sees on a regular basis, both in TMAs and exams, uh, people writing all they know about a subject and then adding, in the last few lines, a bit of application to uh, the question that's set. You are being asked a specific question and you need to structure your answer to deal with those points, not to write uh, a general essay on the subject. And um, and so very, very important point. Um, the second is that it's important to uh, separately identify the specific issues. Um, as I say, we're now at degree level, we need to be uh, analytical and not just sort of making a few comments on, ge on general issues. Thirdly, the importance of using authorities, the conventional articles in TMA02 and relevant cases. Um, it would not be possible to answer a question on privacy and the European Convention on Human Rights without discussing some, uh, probably at some length, the Campbell case and uh, the other leading cases in this uh, subject. And of course, when you're dealing with the European Convention on Human Rights, it's important to be stressing the balancing of rights and demonstrating through uh, your answer that you appreciate that uh, the, the courts have to try and balance these rights and the Convention and the Human Rights Act gives them some insist assistance in doing that. So question one was about, you know, what is my uh, complaint. There were three specific pieces of information. This goes back to my point about specific issues being separately identified. The one was the disclosure of his vodka-filled night of passion with a local prostitute. Secondly, the fact that uh, he uh, suffers from the addiction to vodka. And thirdly, his visit uh, and treatment uh, at the cloisters. TMA 2 needed to address how Mike protects his rights and it was an important point to make it clear that uh, there has been a development of horizontal rights because the convention itself is all about public uh, authorities. So the questions uh, that needed to be logically dealt with, to go back to the, my first point about logical structure, does the publication of the article amount to unlawful interference with Mike's convention rights? And then secondly, is the publication of the information in the article necessary in a democratic society? And a conclusion. Uh, under the question 2A, it was about criminal liability under the Contempt of Court Act 1981. Important point there that that act does not create the offence of contempt of court. This is about strict liability for a specific type of uh, contempt of court. Um, so it needs to be considered whether those criteria are met for there to be strict liability and whether there are any defences that might apply. Uh, question 2 needed a consideration of Article 10, Section 3 of the Human Rights Act, which are actually central to that question, and Section 12, uh, Subsection 4 of the uh, Human Rights Act. The daily case is important, was important there. So, we did spent a lot of time on that. We then did some problem questions. And um, so that took up a lot of time and, dis and uh, we discussed through uh, those problems. Uh, what I will do, and I can only do this for uh, those of you who are my students, is I will send copies of those problem questions that you can work up at, uh, at home. We then had a general debate on uh, whether there should be a Bill of Rights for the United Kingdom. It's clearly something that uh, um, is likely to come up in the news uh, over the next few months. 
and certainly do spend some time addressing that issue. Is the uh, European Convention of Human Rights sufficient? D does there need to be something more? Or do we need a Bill of Rights that's very different from the ECHR? But I would spend some time on, on, on considering uh, your answer to, to that. We then, as we're about to move on now to criminal law, looked at some of the key issues there. So the first question to be considering is, what is a crime? And your manual uh, deals with that. A wider issue to be thinking about is what role should criminal law play in regulating society? There has been a debate in recent years about the increasing criminalisation of activities that previously might have been dealt with in other ways, but which are now being dealt with criminal law. And this, you know, covers everything from ASBOs to motoring offences to uh, smoking in public uh, places. Uh, is it appropriate to be using criminal law um, in such wide areas? Is it the most effective way of actually achieving uh, objectives? So that's something to think about. Look at the classification of offences. Um, make sure that you appreciate the points about burden of proof. And while in W200 you were given an introduction to actus reus and mens rea, you're going to be looking at those in more detail. So don't just assume, oh, well, I've done that last year, uh, or I'm doing it as I'm doing 200 at the same time. You do need to uh, look at the uh, extra depth that there is on those topics. Finally, on to, uh, to TMA03. Um, I discussed um, and have sent out to um, uh, all my students a uh, copy of a flow diagram that takes you through the important issues when dealing with any judicial review question. Uh, there are certain issues that need to be considered, uh, whether the body that you that uh, the decision that is being challenged, whether it is susceptible to judicial review. Now, public bodies certainly are, uh, and if the body is um, exercising um, public law uh, responsibilities, then again, it can come under uh, jail. There are some important case law that needs to be considered on that. Second question is, does the person who wishes to bring the case have standing? Again, lots of case law uh, on, on that topic too. Time limits, there are the statutory uh, time limits, the uh, um, period within which an action must be brought, uh, but also sometimes uh, an act on the that gives the power to take the decision may specify a shorter period. Consider ouster clauses. Annis Minnick, very useful case to have a look at uh, to see the incredible um, approach that the court took to get round uh, what appeared to be an attempt by Parliament to exclude the courts completely. But there are partial ouster clauses, uh, often using time limits, which in practice can make it very difficult to challenge a decision, um, but are not complete ouster clauses, and the courts have shown that they will accept some. Uh, then, of course, the grounds of challenge. Uh, the Diplock uh, criteria, uh, will play a role, but it's those smaller labels that come under the uh, uh, the headings that Diplock gave, and you'll find examples of those in your flowed in the diagrams in the manual. And finally, you need to consider the remedies. So I look forward to um, getting TMA 03 and uh, to the next tutorial. Thank you.